Last week we began a new series, I Love Uganda, and we asked you to go out and, and uh, spread the love with this hashtag, I Love Uganda, and I want to say thank you so much for spreading the love. We've been seeing the pictures of Ugandan food, of beautiful sights around Uganda, and this, uh, this hashtag is really causing waves uh, out there as people are beginning to notice, hey, there is a new language, there is a new vibe in the city. Instead of complaining, hey, we are celebrating, and it has caused people to respond. In fact, in South Africa, they began a, a hashtag, I love South Africa. Some individuals have begun, I love South Africa. Well, Toto Church, I want to say thank you for leading from the front. Thank you for changing the language of the city and influencing people in other nations who are saying, hey, look at our brothers and sisters in Uganda and what they're doing. We want to do the very same in our country. I want to say thank you. Will you give your neighbor a big hand clap one more time and thank them for being an influence. This is what church is all about. And as we talk about I love Uganda, we are realigning our mindset of Uganda with what the word of God has to say. We're not going to get caught up in the negativity. We're not going to get caught up uh, in, in the complaining and the bashing. Instead, we're going to speak well of Uganda because last week we began by saying that Uganda is blessed. And Uganda is blessed. You look at the people, the natural resources. You just look at our Christian heritage. And then we looked at Numbers 13. And we saw that the children of Israel, before they conquered the land, sent out some spies. Ten spies came back with a false report, but two spies had a report of faith saying, yes, there might be giants in the land, but by God's grace, we can conquer the giants and we can take the land. And that's to be our attitude. Yes, there are giants in our land, but hey, friends, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And on our knees, the Bible tells us that our weapons are not carnal, but they're mighty in God, and that with faith in the name of Jesus, we can take the land of Uganda, we can speak good upon the land of Uganda, and we can see God's best come to pass for our country. If you believe it, say amen. And so we recognize that we need to be people of honor in our language, speaking well, lifting up, encouraging, pointing people back to a language of faith and expectation. But we also need to be good stewards of what God has placed in front of us. It could be a business, could be your family, wherever God has plugged you in, do the best to make sure that you are bringing the culture and character of Christ. And how are we going to do that? By sharing our faith. Let's tell people about Jesus. And as we are going to see today, the heart of the problem is the problem of the human heart. And as God reaches the human heart, we begin to see real transformation. We begin to see real change, the kind of change that is lasting and the kind of change that helps us as Uganda become everything that God wants us to be. Our theme text throughout this series is found in Acts chapter 17, verse 26 to 27. And it says, from one man, he, God, made all the nations that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he marked out their appointed times in history and the boundaries of their land. And we recognize that the boundaries of Uganda have been drawn by God. And God did this so that they would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him, though he's not far from any one of us. And we recognize that God allows nations to go through seasons, but every season is allowed and designed by God Almighty for our hearts to be drawn back to him. The season we find ourselves in as a nation is for us to run back to God, is for us to rend our hearts to God. And today we're going to continue on with our series, I Love Uganda. Last week we said we, we love Uganda because it's blessed by God. This week we are saying, I love Uganda because because God has a plan for Uganda. Amen. God has a beautiful plan for Uganda. When I look through the corridors of history and I look back in time, I can see surely God's hand has been upon the nation of Uganda. When I look back, I begin to see, wow, God, you are involved in the detail of our nation. I think through the challenges of health that have existed in this nation before, in the 80s and in the early 90s, HIV AIDS had hit Africa and Uganda as a nation like a time bomb. It was really bad. People were dying and no one knew how to deal with this disease. And it was predicted that the disease, HIV AIDS, would wipe out the entire nation of Uganda. But I thank God that the church took her rightful place and led in the campaign A, B, C, abstain and B was? Be faithful and then see 
Christ, that if we are to live by the statutes and the laws of Christ, if we are to live by the word of God, that we would see real healing, real transformation. And by the grace of God, we recognize that. And in fact, Uganda became a modern nation in terms of helping people how to engage with community and the different stakeholders to see a scourge like HIV AIDS turned around. When I look back, I see the various wars that Uganda has suffered. And, and it seemed like, man, we would be wiped out again. It seemed like there was no hope for Uganda. But right there was the Prince of Peace seated on his throne of glory and watching over our nation. And he looked after us. When I look back and I see the area of worship in the 70s, the church was literally banned. And uh, evangelical churches, Pentecostal churches went underground and began to cry out to God to turn the situation around in our nation. But also give us an opportunity as the children of God to gather in places like this and worship. God friends look what God has done today the church is expanding like never before at that time we were about 4.7 percent of the nation today we are more than 11 percent of the nation let's give God praise for what he has done to give us the freedom of worship in our nation I look at the situation also of leadership more Christians today are rising into places of leadership as we've been crying out hey Lord will you raise godly leadership he is continuing to plant men and women in the corridors of power to influence where this nation is going and you know what friends I believe God is not yet done God still has an amazing plan for Uganda our best days are not behind us they're ahead of us in Jesus name and everybody says amen We've gone through difficult times in the past, but God was faithful to us and he brought us through because God has a plan for Uganda. And many times you may look around our city and our nation and say, has God forgotten us? Is there truly a plan? And i let you know the plan for Uganda does not reside in one man, it resides in Jesus Christ. Amen. And this is the place that the nation of Israel stood at. In fact, the children of Israel found themselves in exile because they had disobeyed God. And because they disobeyed God, they, they ended up in, the nation of Babylon came and, and it destroyed Jerusalem. They were taken to exile and they were crying out to God, God, what is going on? Have you forgotten us? Have you forsaken us? Their hearts were broken. They reached out to God. Now God reached out to them through the prophet Jeremiah and he spoke to them a word of encouragement. I'd like us to turn to Jeremiah chapter 29 this morning. We're going to read from verse 4 to verse 14. From verse 4 to verse 14. God spoke to the children of Israel in exile, and it was a word of hope. It was a word to reassure the children of Israel that though you may be going through a difficult situation, I want to turn it around. So Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 4 to 14. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers, you too will prosper. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my good promise to bring you back to this place. And this is because... The prophet Daniel as well had spoken that there would be 70 years of exile. And now we see God confirming that what he says, after 70 years, I will bring you back to this place. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me. And find me when you seek me with all your heart. I'll be found by you, declares the Lord. And will bring you back from captivity. 
I will gather you from all the nations and places where I have banished you, declares the Lord, and I will bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. So the children of Israel find themselves in a strange place in the land of Babylon. And because of their disobedience, they've been carried on into exile. But while they cry out to God, God reminds them, hey, I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. It was a word of encouragement while they were in a difficult situation. And what, the way we look at the children of Israel here is that they were disengaging. In fact, they had false prophets among them that were telling them, no, we're going to go home soon. But by the prophet Daniel, God had spoken a similar word saying that they would be in exile for 70 years. And false prophets were rising up among them and declaring all sorts of things. We are going back home tomorrow. We'll go back home soon. And God says, don't listen to them. I have not sent them. I promised you a period of 70 years, but I know the plans I have for you. It's to give you a hope and a future. And when those 70 years are done, I am going to bring you back to the land from which I carried you into exile. This is similar almost to the situation that the children of Israel faced while they were in the wilderness. In the wilderness, they spent 40 years because something was not right in their hearts. They often complained because you could see you could take Israel out of Egypt, but it was hard to take Egypt out of Israel. And so God allowed a process of 40 years for there to be cleansing so that the generation that would then step into the promised land would then know what to do in the promised land. And God allows this for our hearts to be dealt with so that we can rend our hearts and bend our hearts towards God. He does a similar thing and sends them into Israel for 70 years this time. And he's allowing this process to happen so that something again can change in their hearts. Because you see, for God, it's not just about what he wants to give you. It's about the condition of your heart. I want to let you know, friends... What we're witnessing in our country today reflects the condition of our hearts. How is your heart? Are you bitter? Are you angry? Are you jealous? Do you have hatred in your heart? What is the state of your heart concerning this nation, concerning your brother and your sister, your family, your place of work, your school? What is the state of your heart? Because at the end of the day, listen friends, we can pray all we want, but we will never fully inherit what God has in store for us if our hearts are not right. It's about the heart. Children of Israel ended up in Exile because of the condition of their hearts. They were walking in disobedience to God. And many ways, friends, when you look across our city and our nation, without pointing a finger, you begin to recognize that there is something wrong with our hearts. And we can no longer afford to point fingers. Let's look inward. And I love Uganda because God has a plan for Uganda and God is so committed to the plan that he has for Uganda that he's going to bring it to pass. But God does not just impose things on us. God wants to work together with us. And the goodness that we pray for in our country and the good things that we want to see that we're asking God for start in our hearts because out of the heart flows the issues of life. So when we look at the children of Israel in exile, there are a couple of things that we can learn real quickly today because we want to spend some time praying for our nation, Uganda. Number one, because it's about the heart, God was dealing with the children of Israel. He says, I want you to return to me. In fact, he says, you will seek me with all your heart and you will find me with all your heart. It's a heart issue. And so number one, if we want to see God's plan and purpose come to pass in this nation, we must repent and return to God. We must repent and turn to God. God is calling us as a nation to return to him. 
Because you see, when your heart has been turned away from God, there will always be a problem. We can chase after economic success. We can chase after processes and systems. We can chase after things and trade opportunities and the, all these global connections. We can chase after that. But if our hearts are not right, there will be a problem. So number one, we are to repent and return to God. God says, for I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, verse 13. Verse 11, plans to give you a hope and a future. Then verse 12, he says, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will do what? I will listen to you. And this is after he has promised, I will bring you back. I know the plans I have for you. But he says, then you will call on me. When I'm done with the process that I'm going to take you through 70 years, then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. Then you will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Because it is a heart issue. That's what J. John said. The heart of the human problem is the problem of the human heart. Jesus addresses the heart. When you look at Matthew 12, 35, this is how Jesus put it. A good man out of the good treasures of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. In Matthew chapter 15, verse 19, Jesus puts it this way. For out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulterers, uh, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. It's a heart issue. The Bible tells us that the heart is desperately what? Wicked. And if the hearts are not surrendered to the Lordship of Jesus, if you've not allowed Holy Spirit to do a work in your heart, if we choose disobedience, if we choose economic prosperity, if we choose those things and God is not the Lord over this nation, it doesn't matter what success we find, it will all wither away. For us to see God's plan and purpose come to pass, it's not going to come by Ugandans being more hardworking. And yes, we need to work hard. It's not going to become, uh, it won't come to pass simply because we got sharper and had a better education system. And we need one. It's going to come because our hearts are surrendered to Jesus. Psalm 33 tells us, blessed is the nation whose God is, whose, whose, whose Lord is God. If God is not the Lord of this nation, friends, we labor in vain. So we return to God by repenting. Repenting doesn't just mean you get down on your knees and pray and ask for forgiveness. Repenting means that you have a change of mind. That you get a new perspective. That you begin to see Uganda differently. You begin to see the sphere where God has blessed you differently. See it as an opportunity to infuse Uganda with the culture and character of Christ. And when we start at that small place, slowly by slowly we are planting seeds. And as we water that seed, and as we do our best, God is going to cause it to grow. And in turn, we're going to see the true influence of God in our city and in our nation. We repent. We turn our hearts to God. We change the way we think. How are we going to do that? Let's ask God for forgiveness. Witchcraft. Murder. Bloodshed, let's ask God to forgive us. But let's change the way we live by changing the way we think. But we also got to preach the gospel. We've got to tell people about Jesus. We have to tell people about Jesus because you see, it's about the, the heart. It starts in the heart. Are you telling people about Jesus? Or have you gotten comfortable coming into a cycle of, oh, I come to church on Sunday, I sing some great songs, as long as me and my family is fine, we are okay. Or are you actively telling people about Jesus, even when they do not want to hear you? You pray, God, give me an opportunity to share the gospel. Because the gospel is the message of salvation. So we're going to repent and turn back to God. But secondly, God is calling us to get involved in the life of Uganda. God told the children of Israel to get involved in the life of Babylon where he had settled them for 70 years. And encourage them, I want you to get involved. Because sometimes we, we separate ourselves and say, you know what, I don't even want to hear anything about Uganda. I don't even want to talk about Uganda. You know what, that mindset is not godly and you're walking in sin. How can you effectively love that which you're separated from? 
How can you even pray from Uganda for Uganda if you're not involved? Because the Bible tells us faith without works is dead. But it's not just any works. They are the works of faith. The works that follow your confession of faith. If you say, I love Uganda, do something about it. It's like a married couple. Man, if you say you love your wife, show it. It's a word for singles. a word of wisdom now for singles. While dating, people bring flowers. I'm telling you, people are awesome. And when they get married, the flowers dry up. Where are the flowers? Oh, you know the economy has changed. You know everything has been increased. No, bring the flowers. Continue to say, I love you. One husband told his wife, you know, when I change my mind, I will let you know. No, every day tell your wife you love her. Continue to open the door for your wife and man and bring coffee to high in bed. Some of you are saying, Pastor Brian, do you do those things? You're asking us to do them. You ask my wife when she comes here, she'll tell you. Tell your wife and show her that you love her. It's one thing to say, but the real test is in what you do. So God was telling the children of Israel, get involved. They had this mentality, oh, we are the children of God. We're not going to engage. God is going to take us back home. The same thing, some people are like, oh, we are on our way to heaven. Uh, this world is not my home. Uganda is your home, and like next week we're going to talk about Uganda is your inheritance from God. So get involved here. God said to them, build houses, verse 5, and settle down. Pay OTT. Get VPN out of your phone. And every guilty person says, hey, the, the congregation is guilty. Pastor Philip, Pastor Joe, we're in trouble. <laughs> Maybe you should have an exercise at the end of the service and say, just honestly open your phone. And if we see VPN on your phone, you get down on your knees, we lay our hands on you, and we cast out the demon of VPN out of your life. <laughs> Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry, have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number. Do not decrease. Seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have called you. Pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Don't pray for peace in the U.S. to run there. Pray for the peace where I have called you, says the Lord. Because if it prospers, you too will prosper. God has a plan for this nation. God wants to give us a future and a hope. But it comes when God's people get involved. When we bring the culture and the character of Christ to where we are, that kingdom mindset, that we are stewards. And a steward is not separated. A steward is involved. They're working tirelessly to make sure that what has been given to them gets better. How does education get better? How does the health sector get better? How does entertainment get better? How does governance get better? How does business get better? How are all these key areas of our nation's life, family, these mountains upon which our, our life is built as a nation, how are they going to get better? It's going to get better when you and I are involved. John F. Kennedy, one time president of the U.S., said, ask not what your country can do for you. Instead, ask what you can do for your country. So what has God given you to do? Let's build the economy of our country. Let's do business here. Don't run away. Pay taxes. Give to Caesar what belongs to and give to God what belongs to God. Some of you are running away, you're pulling out your investments. This is not time to run away. This is time for us to dig in. It's countercultural. That's why it sounds crazy. But God doesn't call us to conform. Amen? God doesn't call us to conform. We don't run away because everyone is running away. We dig in because we are God's people. So we raise godly families because it's a heart issue. How are you raising your children? The other day I was at my home and I could hear my neighbor over the fence just 
shouting at their child and hurling insults. Some of the words they used, I, I, you can't even say them. And this is how people are raising their children. They're angry, people are bitter, they're shouting. These children one day will grow up, they'll not be a child forever. And they'll express that anger because we only express what we've experienced. So what experience are we giving our children in our schools? What experience are we bringing to the marketplace? What experience are we bringing to the corridors of government where some of you sit? Because we will only express what we experience. We can change the experience by bringing the culture and the character of Christ. Kingdom culture. You know, Edmund Buck said the only thing that is necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do what? Nothing. Let's not do nothing. Let's invo get involved. Let's engage. Let's engage with what's happening in Uganda. So yes, we're going to repent and we're going to turn our hearts back to God. But we're also going to get involved. Some of you, God is calling you to get involved at a leadership level. Whenever the cycle is appropriate and there is an opportunity for you to stand in your community, please stand. Determine the agenda for your community. Rally people around God's plan and purpose. Don't disengage because however much you pray, if you're disengaged, it will land on deaf ears. Because we always are motivated by love. If you don't love this country, it doesn't matter how you pray. First Corinthians 13 says, even if you give your body to be burned, but you have not love, you have nothing. You have nothing. So if you don't pray out of love, it's useless. So have we been praying some useless prayers? Because we don't love. And so you pray and you say all these sentences, oh God, heal our land. He looks at you and says, hmm, okay. Church is quiet. And that leads me to my last point. We're going to pray for Uganda. If you want to see God's purpose and plan come to pass for Uganda, hey, because we love Uganda, we're going to pray for Uganda. Verse 7, also seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I have called you. Pray to the Lord for it because if it prospers, you too will prosper. That's why I love our national anthem. Oh, Uganda, may God uphold you. We lay our future in thy hand. He's the God of our future. Our future is in his hands. Amen. Uganda belongs to God. Therefore, we're going to commit to praying for Uganda daily. In your notebook right now, in your phone, I want you to write. Or in your notepad, wherever it is that you record God's word, pray for Uganda every day. Write it down now. I want to see you writing it down now. Write it down. And I'll tell you why after you've written it down. Write it down. Write it down. Don't look at me. Some of you are still looking at me. Don't look at me, write it down. Pray for Uganda every day. And make sure every day is either underlined, circled, or it's written in capital letters. Every day. This is why I'm asking you to write down. Ecclesiastes 5, 4 tells us that God does not delight in fools. In other words, those who make promises and never fulfill them. You've just made a promise right there. You've just made a promise right there. You ought to pray for Uganda every day. Turn to your neighbor and say, pray for Uganda every day. And why do we do this? Because the problems we face as Uganda will not be solved by any individual or organization. Amen. Our challenges are going to be solved by who? Jesus. Jesus is the hope of Uganda. Amen. Jesus is the only hope for Uganda. He is the ultimate answer to all our belongings. And so I want us to read Psalm 121 that's going to come up on the screen. I want us to read it together and with passion. And this is a prayer that David prayed, and I love this prayer. And this is what we're going to pray. Everyone, Psalm 121, we're going to read from verse 1 to 8. On the count of three, we're going to read together. One, two, three, let's read together. Everyone reading? I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From whence comes my help? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. 
The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Give him praise and glory in the house. I love Uganda, therefore I'll pray for Uganda. For if you do not love Uganda, you cannot pray for her. God has a plan for this nation. It's going to start when the people of God get down on their knees. Repent for how far as a nation we have wandered from God. And then commit our hearts back to God. For if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. I believe God wants to do something beginning with his people. And we are his people. Amen. But we're also going to get involved. Don't be passive. Get involved. But we're also going to pray. We pray from a point of love. A love for God and a love for this nation. Because we've got to love God with all of our hearts. But the way we express our love for God is for our love for our nation. Hey, have you lost a love for this nation? God is calling you to love Uganda once again. And when you do that, you will pray not only by love, you pray by faith. And the Bible tells us, the prayer of a righteous man avails power. And we shall see things stand right side up, not just for our good, but for his glory. I love Uganda because God has a plan for Uganda. I believe our best days are not behind us. Our best days are still ahead of us in Jesus' name. Will you give God thanks for his word today?